Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of MIPS Crash Course, a series that we look at the MIPS uh, uh, instruction set and some neat things that we can do with it. So, as always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and let's get started. So today we're going to be looking at subprograms, which is really analogous to functions in high-level languages. So let's just jump into our example. So what is this program going to do? We're going to read in a couple numbers. And we need to do. We're going to do some arithmetic on them, and then we go, we're going to print them out. But what is a subprogram? So just like with functions, a lot of times in assembly language as well as a high-level language, there are sections of code that um, are repeatable. So say uh, if you want to print out the result of some computation, well, that's going to take a string that might be a uh, that set or a string that might say the result is or your answer is uh, and then a space and then it will take an integer or, or a float or whatever you want to print out and it will just print out that float. So if we're going to do that a lot, it doesn't really make much sense for us to repeat that load immediate um, and load address for the string and then a syscall and then a load immediate for an integer and then a move or, or load immediate v0 and then move to a0 for the integer and printing the integer with the syscall. That's pretty repetitive if we have to do multiple prints. So what if we could have something similar to a function? And that's exactly what a subprogram is. So let's kind of build our way up to that. So here we're going to go ahead and just prompt the user for an integer a using what we already know. So for um, when we do four, we set the, uh, the processor into a mode for reading and uh, or printing out a string and our argument there is a string so we'll load the address of that string into a0 and then print it out with the syscall and then we'll go ahead and read in an integer into v0 using uh, a 5 in, in v0 and then a syscall and then we'll move that integer a into s0 and we'll do the same thing for integer b so integer b in this case will uh, will read using another prompt asking the user for an integer b and then we'll move that into s1 after we read it here okay so then we're going to just perform some basic arithmetic so we'll go ahead and just add 5 to that integer a and then we'll multiply that result by the integer b and store it in s0 so let's uh, we already said that we might want to automate that printing out of a string and an integer result so how do we make how do we do that in reality well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have this subprogram. So we're going to give it a label. That way we have, say, something to jump to. So this label will be associated with uh, a program counter value that when we do a jump, which changes the program counter to another, a, another value, it'll change to this address, uh, the address of this label. So uh, what does this label have? Or so how do we get to this label in the first place? So we'll use this. Uh, jump and link instruction right here and uh, this junk this jump and link instruction says I want to jump to the address of this label right here print result and then what does this link mean so we know what jump means what does link mean now link means okay so just like a normal function in a high-level language after that function finishes I want to go back to where I called it from so link puts the address of where it was being called from or where that subprogram was being called from into this RA register, this return address register. That way we know where uh, a subprogram was called from. And later on, we'll see that we have to be a little bit careful with that if we have multiple subprogram calls because they will end up overwriting that RA register if we do multiple jump and links without a return. Okay. So the other thing is we're going to use these A registers for arguments, except this time they'll be arguments to our subprogram. So in this case, our subprogram takes a string in uh, or an address to a string and uh, register A0, and it takes uh, an integer, so the result of that computation in A1. So we'll just load the address of the result string in A0, and then we'll move our result which we stored in S0 into A1. All right, so what happens after we get into this subprogram when we call it? 
Now, it's exactly like we've seen before when it comes to printing out a string and printing out an integer. The only difference is, instead of having to copy this code of loading an immediate and moving an integer value over and over and over, if we have multiple prints, it's replaced by a setup of the arguments and then just a jump and link. Okay, and then what do we do? So this all is just a normal print. So here we'll set the processor into the mode for printing a string. And our address is already in A0, so we don't need to do any uh, load address. And then we can just do a syscall to print that string. Then we need to move our second argument into A0 for the next, uh, the printing of an integer. And then, of course, we need to set the, the system, you know, the processor into printing for uh, printing mode for an integer, which is with code one, and then do a syscall. And then we do our, another new instruction we have, which is JR, which is this jump return. Now, uh, the jump return will just use this, uh, the address pointed to in this return uh, address register and it will go back to the point of execute where execution last was. So here in this case, when we do jump return with register RA, RA was set by this jump and link. So we will begin execution back where we started this call from, and then we'll just terminate the program after that. So let's go ahead and assemble this and see what happens. So here we have the assembly. And then we have our ASCII values. So what were our ASCII values? So we had a string, enter an integer A, enter an integer B, and then the result is. So the result is is what we uh, print out in this print result subprogram. Okay, so let's go back here. And let's go ahead and go to run IO and execute. All right, so it's asking for an integer A. Let's do nine. An integer B, let's do five. All right, and it says our result is 70. So let's spot check this. So we said we're just going to add uh, five to an integer A, so that'll be 14, and then it'll multiply that by our integer B, which is five. So it'll be 14 times five, which is 70. So we got the right answer. Now let's look at some more interesting details here. So if we back up a few instructions, so if we back up to uh, right where we have a jump and link, so here we have our return address register. It's empty, it just has zero in it. And if we continue on, and then we call that jump and link, we see that it gets stored. Uh, what gets stored in RA is going to be the program counter value uh, that we were at, or the program counter value we were at. So we're at 419, uh, 4380, and then we call jump and link. So we continue on one instruction, and it puts in here 4194384. So it increments our program counter by four, which is the same as incrementing by an entire instruction. And so what this basically says is, okay, after execution, I want you to go to the instruction after jump and link. So if we if we use the same program counter value in there, we would just call jump and link over and over and over again. So it needs to be incremented as well. Okay. And then we'll continue on with execution. And then we see that our PC value, after we call jump return down here, so let's fast forward, our PC value um, after that execution turns to 419.4384, the same value in that return address. So that's the basics of how uh, jump and link and jump return uh, function. Okay, so that's going to be our. Uh, um, our example for today of subprograms, like I said, they're very similar to, in a high level language, uh, functions. Uh, so as always, we can go to github.com slash coffee before arch, where we have the code for all of our series. Um, so we're looking at MIPS crash course, and but we also have stuff on GPU programming as well, and C++ and multi-processor programming. So if we go to MIPS uh, crash course and we go to subprograms, we have our example that we went through today. So feel free to download this and check it out and either comment below if you have any questions. I'm pretty quick at getting back to those. Otherwise, I have an email listed here as well and all the previous videos and links to the files. So as always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch and I hope you have a nice day.